Hi, everyone. We are live at Pace Studios right now with Graham Parker. Graham, thank you for being here, man. Thank you for having me, Brad. Very interesting place. You've showed me around. A lot of uh, amazing tapes you got here and stuff, archives, things. Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, that's right, man. It's always a pleasure on our side to show it or show this place off to people who care about it. And we've got the uh, the Graham Parker reels sitting right behind you from that Poughkeepsie <laughs> show. They're just above that, uh, that, that tape machine. Oh, there's a lot of money up there, baby. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Next to the uh, next to the Elton John, next to the John Coltrane. It's uh, class. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I like the tapes in the tins as well well that you got up the back here yeah man we can we can geek out on some of these tapes afterwards if you want to that's no that, that louis Armstrong. no it's okay. all right i've all done right. it all i've right. geeked enough <laughs> <laughs> well man thank you for doing this today we really appreciate it uh doing it on show day you were at city winery last night which sold out you are playing city winery again tonight which is sold out again and uh we appreciate your time today um, so we're going to do one from Cloud Symbols, which came out last year on 100% Records, and you're doing one from Squeezing Out Sparks, which has been reissued as the uh, the 40th anniversary celebration of that album that has made so many top 100 albums of all time, top yeah. 500 albums of all time lists. Um, it's mm. one of my personal favorites, man. I really, this is a, a good day. Thanks for doing this. Sure. Um, you can you tell us what you're going to start out with? Start out with a song called Ancient Past from, as you said, uh, Cloud Symbols. Which features the kazoo, but not on the recording. I like to tell people the horn section does that. But um, and two of those guys, the original rumor brass. So the kazoo is just you know sort of illustration, <laughs> and here it comes. <laughs> Stamp collections out Turned to the Belgian Congo It wasn't very long ago We used to call it that My coins are in the drawer They lost their value long ago I take them out from time to time They're worthless, that's for sure The soundtrack of my life Comes from Pearl and Dean They used to run the adverts on every movie screen I love my aspidestras They're nurtured so they last Keep them on the landing In the ancient past Yes! Seem to have moved on It only took a moment A moment of indecision I was left behind But I've had a damn good run I knew it couldn't last Leaving in the attic In the ancient past Leaving in the attic In the ancient past Yes Thank you. All right, thank you, man. It sounds great. How does uh, how does the the rumor horn section feel about the uh, this particular arrangement of it? It sounds great from where I'm sitting. Yeah, well, I I went down to there's two guys from the the original um, section. One of them, Ray Ray Beavis, who plays the sax and and writes the arrangements all them out of them, and and Dick uh, Hanson, the trumpet player. So those guys were out with us in the seventies when we did like double up bills with Thin Lizzy and Southside Johnny and some of those four months tours. And uh, they're still playing and playing great. And I, I went down to Ray, Ray's house in Exeter um, and I sort of sang my horn arrangements over um, over the songs that had already been recorded by me and the band I dubbed The Gold Top. So he basically followed what I was showing him. And the same with this, like the kazoo or hum it, you know. Yeah. And then I just said, fill in the bits that I'm, you know, not covering and elaborate or... 
condense. And so it's a fantastic job they did. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, can can you tell us a little bit about the the genesis of the album itself? How did uh, uh, Cloud Symbols come to be? Uh, it was Judd Apatow, guilty as charged. He uh, he got me going into this, but I'd, I'd written a few songs and I was on tour with uh, Brinsley Schwartz uh, in the UK, guitarist from the Rumour, doing a duo tour. And I got an email from Brad saying, have you got any spare songs for one of my TV shows? And um, I said, no, I don't have anything in the can, thinking he meant, you know, something recorded with a band. But um, I had three days off after the, a gig in Leeds. I went back to London and I thought, you know, I've got this song written. I think it's complete. Maybe I should bang it down on an iPhone in the kitchen and send it to him, just on the off chance. And I did, and he said, I love it. How would you record it? I said, well, with light touch brushes, maybe Martin Belmont on guitar doing all this fabulous glissy stuff that he does. Really understated. And the song was called Love Comes. And... Um, also, I was, I was halfway through writing some other songs and it, it dawned on me that this could be an album, the conceptual feel of this could be really consistent if I push a load of other songs out of the way that are either half finished, maybe finished, and concentrate on songs that will work in this format, re recording format. So Judge kind of kicked me, kind of propelled me into doing another album because I, I can drag this stuff out for a long time, yeah. you know, because I, I sometimes write different conceptual things that could be thrown together in one of those eclectic records, or it could be more, okay, separate this and do it that way. So he used the song on the show Crashing, and uh, then I recorded four more with a band. They were just, they weren't finished. They were basically rough, rough takes, and they would be elaborated on later. And one of them was the song Dreaming. And I sent them to Judd because I know he loves rough mix, uh, you know, rough mixes. He, I think he prefers rough mixes to finished albums. And he used the song Dreaming on his show Love that was on Netflix. Yeah. So I got HBO and Love covered with those with those two songs. And That's cool. And those are both outstanding shows. That's awesome to, to be a good. part of something that you also actually consume yourself and are, are, are a fan of. Oh, yeah, genuinely. because I, I didn't know Judd until he used a song of mine called Love Gets You Twisted from Squeezing Out Sparks on his show uh, Undeclared. Mm. And, I, and, and then I, somebody sent me the... His, um, uh, the you know, the, what are the DVDs of of that, and said, "Now you've got to watch Freaks and Geeks first. Oh yeah! So I got into that, and was that was obsessive. It was so good. <laughs> and then Undeclared, I watched, and there was Love Gets You Twisted on the last episode. I mean, I saw the last episode, which had nothing to do with all the previous ones that he put in different actors. I think he was getting canned. The show was getting canned, and I think he. He brought Ben Stiller in, who wasn't in any of the other shows. Yeah. As far as I recall, it was Seth Rogen in the other shows. Very interesting. Uh, he, was giving, he was giving them a bit of the finger, like, hey, you're cancelling the show, you idiots, you know, right. whoever put it out in those days before Netflix and stuff. Did, that, did any of the roughs make it into the finished shows or did you always did you always take the rough and take it into the studio and record a version of it or did any, did any demos, unfinished demos, end up actually out in the world? Um, what on the on judge shows? Well, the dreaming was an, a rough mix. Yeah, but you know, usually I like to give people the final product and say this is it. You're stuck with it. But with Judd, I thought, well, I've sent him rough mixes, and damn it, if he didn't use one, <laughs> I couldn't say, can you wait for another six months or whatever. Right. It's like do, go for it. You know. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about what's coming up next? So I know it's uh, it's off of Squeezing Out Sparks, which is, I mean, I hope, uh, I, I would imagine that everyone who's tuned into this broadcast right now is is familiar with that work. But can you tell us uh, a bit about the song that you're going to play from it? Uh, well, it's, it's the first track of the album, the original album, um, Discovering Japan. Um, and, uh, well, it's a kind of complex song. There's a lot going on in there. There's nothing to nail down particularly, but uh, I think I was touring enormous amounts then and I'd be on aeroplanes jotting down notes from all the chaos that was happening to me and uh, interesting situations and all the new people you meet when you're young and you're doing this kind of thing for the first time and uh, and now we have the uh, the the live the, the solo anniversary 40th anniversary record yeah. uh, and that was that was kicked off because Martin Belmont the guitarist who I mentioned, uh, he's, he's done a book of all the um, guitar parts 
of squeezing out sparks with anecdotes. It's, you know, a book about this size, coffee table kind of size. And he, somebody mentioned to him that the record will be 40 years old. Uh, March, that's the March that's just gone by. So I plunged in and said I should do a solo acoustic version of it. Yeah. To go along with the book and celebrate that 40 years because it, it both took me and Martin by surprise. 40 years, you're kidding. So Howling Wind was another five years before that, I think. So the, the history is getting a bit long in the tooth here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're having I mean, we're happy to, to host you with the this I mean this is fairly fairly similar if not the same as the arrangement that people hear on the album on the on the uh, 40th anniversary album. Yeah, I didn't um, reinvent completely, but I reinvent the way I sing it and the the space of it which you know is not like the record which of course was thundering guitars and drums. Sure. But it's um <laughs> It's got the same, similar feel, but a bit more wistful because it's so low and I sing it different. So, ready to go? Yes, please. All right, Discovering Japan. Her heart is nearly breaking The earth is nearly quaking Tokyo tax is breaking, it's screaming to a halt There's nothing to hold on to When gravity betrays you And every kiss enslaves you She knows how hard a heart grows Under the nuclear shadows She can't escape the feeling Repeating in her head When after all the urges Some kind of truth emerges We felt the deadly surges Discovering Japan Discovering Japan She eyes only use her They always ram right through her Giving an eastern promise That they could never keep Seeing a million miles Between their jokes and smiles She heard their high denials As the tears dropped sideways Down her face I wake up talking in the tongue of a different race Race As the flight touches down My watch says 8.02 But that's midnight to you Midnight to you I dreamed headlong collisions In jet lag panel visions I shouted sayonara It didn't mean goodbye But lovers turn to poses Show up in film exposures Just like in travel brochures Discovering Japan Discovering Japan Discovering Japan Man, Graham, thank you very much. This is a great, great day for me. I've enjoyed it very much. I um, was telling you earlier, I mean, I saw you probably 15 years ago at the Freight and Salvage, and it was it was awesome. I brought you up my my vinyl copy of Squeezing Out Sparks plus Cart Fishing. That on was Valium. you. It was me. You signed all this <laughs> shit. You didn't have to. You took, you know, as it took it took a minute just to just to hang out, and that was it was cool. Man, it and was I really just cool. played there again recently to a packed house. Fantastic venue. Thanks yeah. for coming to that one. Yeah, absolutely. So um, thank you very much for your time today. I've 
enjoyed it very much. Have a great show at the City Winery tonight. Um, there's seven more shows on this leg of the tour. You're at City Winery Boston this Saturday night. Um, it's wrapping up at my father's place in uh, out on Long Island, and uh, all those dates are up at GrahamParker.net. And uh, best of luck on the 40th anniversary, the uh, the solo acoustic uh, reinterpretation of Squeezing Out Sparks. Yes, and, sir. man, thank, thank you. you for sharing it with us today. Thank you, Brad, and on all the viewers at home. Appreciate it.